Everybody and their mother want to get a software engineering internship, but contrary to what you might have heard, it's actually not that easy. My name is Sid, I just finished my first year of computer science at Georgia Tech, and I'll be starting my internship at Red Hat in about two weeks. In this video, I'll be talking to you about how I managed to get an internship as a freshman, and how you can too. Keep in mind that this video is about my experience, and although I believe my tips are pretty general, they might not match your situation exactly, so you'll have to take that into consideration when you know listening to these tips. Also, you don't need to get an internship your freshman year. Many people don't, and then they do just great in their careers anyways. But if you do want to get an internship, then following these tips should help you in doing so. All right, without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. I think it's important to understand the whole internship application timeline if you want to properly understand how this whole process is going to work. So let me talk to you about that for a little bit. Usually a lot of companies end up opening their applications around mid-August, with most companies ending up opening their applications by October. So by October, you'll have be able to apply to most of the big companies. Some will open and add their applications a little bit later, like December or January, but because they want to send out their offers to people by March so that they know everything that's going to be happening come May, then they open their applications pretty early to allow time for the interview process to go through. Speaking of the interview process, once you apply, you'll probably hear back within three weeks if you are going to be moved on to the interview stage. And if you don't hear back within three weeks, you've been rejected. You may never get an official rejection email, but you were rejected. Although there are some companies that hit you up like five months later, that happened to me actually with a few companies for interviews, but that's besides the point. After you get called on for an interview, you'll probably go through one or four in from anywhere from one to four interviews, depending on the company, you know, depending on what they value. And four is usually the max, but sometimes companies go over. And before your interview, usually at the same time as you apply, you'll get a link to an online coding assessment that'll be on a platform like CoSignal or HackerRank that you'll have to complete. And then they'll judge your score on that and review your resume. And if they like what they see in the review, they'll move you on to the interview so that I mentioned beforehand. And you know, if everything goes well, then you get the offer. It sounds pretty simple, right? Well, it's not, it's very nerve wracking. And let's talk about why. In my opinion, the hardest part of actually the entire process is managing to get an interview in the first place. Some people will say that, oh, the actual interview is harder. I don't think so, especially if you're a freshman or sophomore because there's so many entry level people applying for these internships and recruiters are gonna be biased towards the upperclassmen. So as a freshman or a sophomore, you're not really gonna be getting a chance to get an interview all the most. I applied to 200 companies and I think I got 10 interviews uh, total out of them. And that could be for a variety of reasons. My resume was bad, it didn't pass the automatic test. I think it was mostly because I was a freshman and they were like, oh, he's graduating in 2025, then yeah, I don't want him because he's not even entering the full-time workforce. Or, you know, I just didn't have the experience for the company. Regardless, there are ways that you can optimize your chances to actually get an interview. And once you get the interview, all you have to do is study for it, which isn't that bad. But let's talk about how you can actually optimize your chances and maximize your chances, especially as an underclassman, to manage to get an interview. Because once you enter your upperclassman years, it becomes a little bit easier, especially for a junior, to get an internship interview, at least, as long as your resume is fine. So let's talk about what you need to do. First of all, you have to be aware that there are quite a few freshman and sophomore only internship programs. Now, these are programs by big tech companies to you know, bring in underrepresented people into the technology world, get them used to working in internships, working for tech companies, doing software engineering on a daily basis. A lot of the big tech companies offer programs like this. I know there's Google Step, Facebook University, and Microsoft Explorer to name a few. I'll leave a link in the description to a bunch more so you can prepare for those and be aware that they're gonna be coming out later this year so you can apply to them when the application's open and have the best chance possible of getting an interview. Of course, even when you apply to these, you'll have less competition because it's only for freshmen and sophomores, but if your resume isn't good, it's still not gonna get there. And we'll talk about the resume in just a little bit. The next big thing that could help you get interviews is a referral. For those of you that aren't aware, a referral is basically where you get a full-time employee at a current tech company to refer you for a job. Basically on the application form, they'll always have a box where you can say, where did you hear about this application? And that I'm pretty sure that's what counts as a referral. You put down, you know, whoever referred you, their name, and then the interviewers or the recruiters will probably fast track you for an interview because you are being vouched for by somebody that already works at that company. Now, obviously this works best if you actually know the person in real life and you're not asking random people off the street for a referral. But you know, if you don't know anybody that works at a tech company and you wanna get a referral, there are some people on LinkedIn that are open to doing this. And it's best if you find somebody that has some sort of connection to you, whether this be through your high school, your actual college, or maybe you both grew up in like the same small town or whatever, I don't know. Just find somebody that you have a small personal connection to so that you can manage to get a referral from them. And of course, don't just go out reaching out blindly to people asking for a referral. 
although you could probably do that it's just not nice you know you don't want to wait how would you feel if you woke up one day with like a bunch of different random freshmen in your dm saying yo please get me a referral you work at google please 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 i need a referral it's not going to work out especially if there's a lot of other people doing the same thing so just reach out to people that you have some mutual connection to so that it's less weird and slightly more authentic. I didn't do this myself and I kind of regret it because I feel like if I asked for referrals, I probably would have gotten interviews, but that's not something I'm going to make a mistake of this time around. I'm going to be asking for referrals from people that I know, hopefully to get an interview. But yeah, referrals are very, very key in ready to get interviews because of how somebody is vouching for you. And because they're vouching for you, the recruiter's like, okay, this guy probably knows at least how to code. All right, now let's talk about how you need to get your resume intact. If you don't get a referral, and even if you do manage to get one, you need to make sure that your resume is in pretty good condition. First of all, you should probably just start off with some sort of template. A standard template is usually nice. I use a really great one from Overleaf. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. You'll just have to fill out the LaTeX a little bit, and then you'll get a nice looking resume that'll pass all of these uh, automatic tests and keyword tests. And that's what you really have to make sure is that once you submit it, are the automatic systems gonna be able to read your resume correctly? And if they are, then you're in a pretty good spot. The actual content of the resume is uh, really up to you based on what your experiences are. If you've had past tech experiences, great, list them under the experience section. If you haven't, then you should be probably filling up your uh, resume with side projects. And even if you have had past tech experience, you should have a lot of side projects on your resume anyways. Pick a few side projects, two to three, that really demonstrate your skills. Um, and in the descriptions for the side projects, Talk about the technology stack you used, why you use that tech stack, and if you release that project at all in any way, how many users use it, um, and try to include some numeric data in there to make it seem a little bit more impressive. Just try to figure out what you do. If you did a machine learning project, then you know include what your accuracy was for the machine learning model that you trained, et cetera, et cetera. Additionally, if you're applying to uh, applying to any type of internship and it's sort of kind of a niche field within software engineering like maybe you're applying to an ML uh, company or a finance company then it's nice to be able to say that you have specialized side projects in that genre in not in that genre in that industry right if you're applying to a finance if you're applying to a finance internship then it's nice to have some sort of finance uh, projects in your side project whether in your portfolio whether this be you know pulling stock data from some sort of API and visualize to get it some way, or whether it's like training a model to predict the price of crypto the next day or something like that. Same with machine learning, you know, have a machine learning project on your side project in your, on, in your resume if you're applying for a machine learning job. Tailor your resume towards the jobs you're applying to, but in general, if you're applying to a general full stack software engineering job, it doesn't really matter as long as you have the languages that are required on your resume. Now, once you're done with your resume and you've sent it in, it's best to get it reviewed. I mean, before you send it in, just get it reviewed by some people at your current university that have gone through the internship application process, get feedback from them, and then be able to tell you, oh, hey, you know, this resume is good. You don't really need to change anything, or you haven't really listed your experiences in a way that makes sense for the recruiter. So don't change that, add some more keywords, etc. My own resume wasn't that great my first year. And if you wanna see a whole video about me like critiquing my own resume, leave a comment down in the description down below. But that's all I really have to say about the resume section. There's a lot of other great videos on the internet that you can watch to build a good resume. That's not what this video is really for. So how do you actually prepare for the interview once you get it? Now there's four main types of interviews that you're gonna be having to deal with in your software engineering internship journey. First of which being the behavioral interview, then you have online coding assessments, technical interviews, and take home projects. Let's start about the behavioral interview first. So the behavioral interview, I don't really have much to say about this. As long as you have been able to cultivate a story, you know, about why you want to work at that company, research a little bit into that company, and you just really know your own key strengths and, you know, salient features and things that you put on your resume, you should be fine. Just treat it like a conversation, be a good human being. And honestly, the behavioral interview is really never the hard part of a application process. After that, you have the online coding assessment and not after that in the process because the online coding assessment is usually the first type of interview you do for a company. And this is what happens when after you submit, they'll just send you a link to a code signal or hack rank with your two websites uh, for like coding questions. And they'll give a test for an hour, 10 minutes to two hours where they'll give you a few algorithmic problem solving questions and you'll just have to solve them really quickly. They'll judge you based on your time, your accuracy, et cetera. And then based on your score and you know your resume, you'll get selected to move on further into the interview process. After the online coding assessment, 
usually comes in actual technical interview if you did move on. And the content covered on both of these are pretty similar. They're both data structure and algorithms questions, read code type questions. But in my opinion, the technical interview is usually harder, not only because the actual questions are harder, but because you have to be able to explain your thought process pretty nicely towards an interview or a group of interviewers. But because you are explaining your thought process, it also makes things a little bit easier because even if you don't get to implement the correct solution in time, you won't be immediately given a zero like you would on an online coding assessor. Because if you manage to explain the correct thought process or a close to correct thought process to the interviewers and you've implemented most of it, but time runs out, they're not gonna dock off too many points because they know that, oh, this guy can actually code. He knows the material. He was just a little bit slow. So you will still will lose points because you didn't implement it quickly enough, but it won't be catastrophic. Next up is the take home project, which is looking my favorite version of uh, the coding interview, because instead of having to, you know, do some random algorithms problems in a very short period of time, you're just going to be doing a take home project for a few days or a week that consists of technology that you're actually gonna have to be using on the job. They'll tell you to build out like some to-do list application or something. That's obviously a very simplistic example, but they'll ask you to build out some sort of application or some other piece of software, send it back to them. They'll review your code quality, um, you know, your comments, all of that, and then be like, okay, this guy knows how to code. He's a pretty good software engineer. And then move you on in the interview process. Now, how do you actually study for the technical interview? Well, there's quite a lot of videos already on the internet on how to do that, but I recommend uh, going to Grind75. I'll leave a link in the description down below, um, which has a bunch of lead code questions that are really good, uh, along with their solutions. Neat Code on YouTube also has a playlist with like all of those videos covering the Blind75 which are lead code questions that cover all the important topics that you need to know. And of course, read the read cracking the coding interview. I mean, everybody recommends it because it's good and it'll cover the patterns that you need to know to participate in the coding interview successfully. Now, grinding for the coding interview is just something you should be doing every day, at least a little bit, you know, do like a lead code question a day and do it continually. So your skills are always intact and sharp so you can you know, take an interview at any time. But this isn't the hard part. The hard part is getting the actual interview in the first place. So focus on that before you focus on this. At the end of the day, the two main things that you can do to improve your chances of getting an interview or an internship or any cool opportunity at all are building cool side projects to put on your resume so that people are like, wow, this guy's cool. He knows what he's doing. He makes cool things. And also just for your own benefit because you're learning cool things. And two, making friends with interesting people because then they can refer you to opportunities that they think might be a good fit for you. And you can refer them to opportunities that you think might be a good fit for them. Remember, relationships aren't purely transactional. You should always be trying to give more than you get because you should be treating relationships as mutually beneficial and actual friendships and not just for the sole purposes of networking and improving your career. That's all I really have to say about getting an internship as a freshman or getting an internship at all, really. Take all my advice with a grain of salt. I still have only managed to do one internship in my career. There'll be many more coming and you should be focusing on, you know, a lot of advice from a lot of different sources. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, and if you have any comments, leave them down below or join my Discord server and ask questions to anybody and everybody and we can have a fun time in there and build a cool community. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Good luck on your interview process. Good luck on your internship process and peace out.